In 2005, four bands from Beijing, Classic Cars, Snapline, Quincy Big Shark, and Ne Zhang organized a tour called No Beijing, partially in tribute to the No Wave movement of New York City in the late 1970s. Inspired by the flourishing Beijing underground music scene, the American economist Michael Pettis opened a live music club, D22, located at a college town area, Wudaoko, in Beijing. Some people commented that D22 was like CBGB of New York City, with a focus on helping young emerging talents. Carsey Cars, a three-piece noise rock band, were regular attendees of D22 at the time. Drawing influence from the Velvet Underground and Sonic Youth, Classic Cars embraced simple, repetitive, almost trite like lyrical lines and the melodic instrumental dissonance. <laughs> In 2007, Michael Pettis founded the record label, Maybe Mars. One of the acts from Maybe Mars, also a D22 regular attendee, was the indie rock band, The Gar. The Gar quickly gained popularity in 2009 with their self-titled debut album. A lot of Chinese bands at the time preferred to sing in English and tended to approach with a more obscure and experimental style. The Gar sang in Mandarin and had more tuneful melodies. The Gar aims to resonate with listeners' experiences and take roots in their hearts. There was also more a sense of pureness and usefulness in them.
In the 21st century's Chinese Indian music scene, probably one of the most unique and recognizable acts is Wu Tiaoren, a folk duo from Haifeng, a small coastal town in the east of Guangdong province. Wu Tiaoren's music is strongly based on Canton culture, with a focus on ordinary people and their anecdotes. Before releasing their debut album, Xian Cheng Ji, in 2009, the duo were Scrap City Sellers. Scrap City! What is Scrap City? Scrap CDs played an important role in the generation of Chinese music lovers. If they weren't for Scrap CDs, probably most of the acts mentioned in this video wouldn't have existed. Scrap CDs were popular in the 1990s and early 2000s. Scrap CDs were basically leftover CDs that record labels were unable to sell. So, record labels cracked a dock on the CD surface to destroy any possible commercial use. After that, record labels sold them to other countries as plastic waste. Despite the deliberate damage, Scrap CDs were mostly playable, at times maybe missing one or two tracks. Some Chinese traders made use of this opportunity and resold those Scrap CDs as business. Back to Wu Tiaoren. Both of Wu Tiaoren members were exposed to and had listened to so many different music from selling Scrap CDs, and they concluded that they had to be unique to stand out. Their trademark features are high phone dialect and singing, casually colloquial language, and the use of accordion. The artwork is also unique in drawing inspiration from seemingly unremarkable things and at times seems like an anti aesthetic They being what is truly remarkable in the easily forgotten. Wu Tiaoren's discography is a depiction of how Canton folklore encountered the transition between traditional culture and the influence of the globalization of the last 30 years. And how should they face it? By singing about safeguards, farmers, factory workers, trying to find pigs in the countryside, etc. Wu Tiaoren tend to say, just live life. Living might just be the whole meaning of it. Wu Tiaoren are optimistic in that an ordinary person can find joy and meaning from many different things. Just as the French novelist Maxime Proust wrote, the real voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscape, but in having new eyes. Wu Tiaoren bring tears from the laughter and evoke laughter from the pain. More than musical entertainment, they might as well be therapeutic. Wu Tiaoren are the true street artists. If Wu Tiaoren are one of the most unique acts in the 21st century's Chinese indie scene, then Wan Neng Qinyan Lu Dian, Omnipotent Youth Society, are probably one of the most popular. Both Wu Tiaoren and Wan Neng Qinyan Lu Dian, Omnipotent Youth Society, show strong roots of geography and where they are from. Wan Neng Qinyan Lu Dian. Omnipotent Youth Society are an indie rock band from Shijiazhuang, a northern industrial city and the capital of Hebei province. In 2010, Wan Neng Qinyan Lu Dian released their self-titled debut album and it instantly gathered a huge fan base. 
not only in mainland China, but also in Taiwan and Hong Kong. At Chinese festivals, you will see thousands of people singing in chorus to it. In 2020, Wanneng Qingyan Lüdian released their second album, Ji Xi Nanling Lu Xing, and it sold 500,000 digital albums on the music streaming platform NetEase. Wanneng Qingyan Lüdian often have long, ambitious, strong song structures leaning toward progressive rock and jazz fusion, with horns such as a trumpet and saxophone being more prominent than drums. Wan Neng Qingyan Lü Dian have been compared to the American indie rock band Neutral Milk Hotels, uh, which I think is slightly funny, uh, because in my mind their music is not at all similar. However, more than just sharing the word hotel in their names, they both Wan Neng Qingyan Lü Dian and Neutral Milk Hotel do have cut following that are very loyal and devoted. Probably because uh, both their musics are highly emotional and can form a strong, intimate connection with their listeners. Moreover, they both have beautiful, poetic lyrics which forge that kind of connection. There is no doubt that Wan Neng Qingyan Lü Dian, omnipotent youth society, carry a certain emotional bond with Chinese millennials. Okay, so that's the second video of the Chinese rock band series. And oh my gosh, and I'm not sweating. I am literally just feel sweats right now because I don't want the AC, the AC is just really noisy and I don't want the noise to be recorded at the end. And I live in a very hot city. <laughs> it's summer right now. And so if you like it, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And there is like the third, uh, which is the final part of the Chinese rock band series, the third video. Okay, see you soon. Bye bye.